I'm going to be going over the steel design books that I have on my desk and I'll be going over how valuable they are, how often I use them, and how practical they are, and essentially if they're worth having on your desk. Hi, I'm Matt Picardle and I'm a structural project manager in the Southern California area. Let's get into today's content. The first book that I have on my desk is Steel Design by William Segu. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Anyways, this was a book that I've had uh, ever since uh, undergrad and it's been very valuable and it basically has all the essential concepts, the fundamentals of steel design that you need to know and it's still very practical in uh, the structural engineering industry once you get into it. You can see how much I use it. I have a very crappy tabs. <laughs> I could do a, a better job of tabbing, but you can just see how much I keep referencing it, uh, whether it's for welds or, or beam designs or, or tension and axial load. So I still use this book a lot and I very good reference book. And I think it's, um, it's a must have if you're, if you have anything that has to do with steel design in your firm. The next book that I'm gonna be going over is this, not really a book, it's the Steel Construction Manual from AISC. They have a newer edition of this, but essentially if you're taking a steel class, you probably use this book. And if you've been designing in the structural engineering industry for a while, for sure you have this book. Uh, for those of you, for those students that don't know, you're going to be using this book a lot just because it has so many design tables and, and shortcuts that can help you in your design. So instead of doing calculations, they basically have a bunch of design tables and uh, clearance requirements, weld requirements that uh, come in handy so you don't have to redo those calculations all over again. So this is a definitely must have and you probably already have this book too. I also want to mention the AISC Steel Construction Manual Design Examples. This is a document that's free that you can find by just Googling it. You can just Google AISC Design Examples. Uh, you should be able to find this document and this one was very helpful just because even though the construction manual gives you a lot of design tables, basically this, uh, this document shows you a lot of calculations. So as you can see here, they go into LRFD and ASD. So it's a really good resource uh, in case you need to get into the numbers and the calculations a lot more in depth than just going through the AISC manual. So the next couple books that I'm going to be going over have more to do and are more relevant if you're in a seismic zone or if you're designing in a seismic area. The first one is Ductile Design of Steel Structures. This is by Michel Brunea, Chia Ming Wang, and Raphael Sabelli. I hope I pronounced those two, those correctly also. But this is the one that I took in my grad school, my grad studies. So maybe if you didn't take a master's class, this is where they get into the nitty gritty of um, how they come up with all those seismic lateral force resisting systems and uh, ASCE. I found this book really helpful when I needed to know the why on some of the detailing issues. Like say we had a special moment frame, we get questions in the field about, hey, can, can we cut this weld or do we need this weld? And when I really needed to get into, hey, why do, why do we even have that requirement in the, the code books? Uh, this was a good, good resource to go to because it kind of shows you why they came up with those standards, why they came up with those detailing requirements and a lot of the seismic force resisting systems that you have like eccentrically braced frames, uh, BRB frames or buckling restrained brace frames. And um, uh, this was really good. So definitely a grad level class. So maybe if you didn't take your masters, this might be a good resource to, to catch you up on what the others are learning in their uh, master's programs. Overall, it's not too practical in terms of, of designing. It uh, doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have a lot of example problems, but it is very good to have as a resource once you need to know um, the why of things on, on why they're designed. So overall, it's good to have, but I don't think it's essential. Next one is the Seismic Design Manual by AISC. Again, this is pretty essential if you are in uh, designing for a seismic region. Uh, this is actually really good just because obviously has code stuff too but it has a lot of example problems and additional information whenever you're designing something so if you've never designed us 
a special moment frame before, they go through a ex design example of that. If you've never designed a BRB frame before, they have examples going through that and it's very detailed and the examples are very good and easy to follow. So definitely uh, a must have if you're in a seismic zone. So the last book that I'm gonna be going over is the Seox Structural Seismic Design Manual. And this is volume four. This is for steel frame buildings. They have a whole series of these. Uh, this one is specifically for steel frame buildings. And I think this is a must have. I use this all the time, especially if I've never dealt with uh, a different, uh, with a particular type of uh, steel frame system before. So if, if you've never done special moment frames before, they go through an example project that goes through all of the special moment frame detailing and requirements. And they have that with a lot of these uh, systems. So they have special concentrically brace frames, buckling, buckling restrained brace frames, special plate shear walls, and a lot more. So it has a lot of good example problems. That's what I use it a lot for. And it, I use it a lot for, um, also they got examples for uh, flexible and rigid type of diaphragm. So it's a good example for that if you need more seismic resources. So definitely a must have, I use it all the time. Also make sure to check out my structural engineering podcast below and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and make sure to comment below if you agree with my book reviews or not. I will see you next time.